88, or if you're on Dream and you're in. Welcome. <clears throat> there you go. You're on Radio FM 88 Australia. You're going live on your particular Facebook site. You also listen to the radio on FM 88 for those people in South um, Brisbane down to the Gold Coast. And uh, those who are listening through the website, radiofm88.com.au. And uh, tonight, um, our time, which is obviously morning in other parts of the world, uh, Julia, um, who is down the bottom here, has um, put forward, um, there you go, Steve Richards. And I have to say, we've been talking off air, as you do, in the green room, and um, we've built up a rapport on, on similar aspects of, of life. And um, I'm sure we're going to be in for an enjoyable treat. Um, I'll pass it over to Julia. Thank you very much, Julia. Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on Dreaming the New Dream. Yes, I'm delighted because I've heard a lot about Steve Richards um, being in the healing space. And uh, Steve Richards is um, an Aboriginal descendant himself and has spent 50 years researching and practicing dream time healing and turning it, it um, understanding the cycles of time and how the ancestors of the past could move in and out of dimensions of time to heal. Steve's uh, very well recognized in his field for being actually very successful in clearing cycles of violence and aggression in very fast sessions. And um, he's been invited into different jails and uh, into rehabilitation clinics and has had great success. So welcome to our show, Steve Richards. Thank you. So Steve, um, you write on your website, which is holographic kinetics, that even as a teenager, you were able to, you know, you discovered that you could do hypnosis and, um, and mind magic. Can you tell us a little more about that? So sort of how it started off? Look, it goes back to when I was four years old. My mother sat me down and wanted to know how I, was, how I knew the future. And my comment as a four-year-old, well, doesn't everybody remember the future? Doesn't everybody remember the past? And she said, no. And I remembered who I was. I remember the past. But part of our culture, my mother and my grandmother, they both knew the future. And they, they spent, as we were growing up, they'd sit down with us and my sister and myself, and they'd teach us everything they knew about the past everything they knew about culture. And really, to understand that, we're going to go back, and my great-grandmother was actually taken away at the age of eight by Aboriginal Protection Agency. She was actually found at 14 in horse shackles. So just like they shackled up the horse so it couldn't run, they had her shackled. And a drover found her at the general store, and he, the time he says, how much you want for the gin? You know, they sold it for half the price of skins he just sold, and she came with as a drover's boy. But she died at 15 years old, giving birth to my grandmother. Now, because my grandmother never had a mother, and because they were herded into you know, stations, we had the maids of servants, the butlers, the gardeners, the clever men, the elders, they took her under the wing, and they taught her all about the old ways. So as we'd grow up, she'd talk about the old ways. But at the same time, she had the old ability to understand the future. And she'd sit down and tell my sister and myself, you know, you've got a great cast task ahead of you. We have to get the old knowledge out because it's going to be lost. My sister, her father was actually an Amer Aboriginal. Her father was an American sailor, so she had very light skin. We got, we got in the sun, and I'd go pretty well, pretty dark, and she'd go pink. And what happened was, was when I was 15 years old, my mother died. I was on the streets at 15. My sister was adopting Aboriginal children, not adopting, I should say, she was fostering Aboriginal children. And they actually called her white trash. That really upset her. I remember coming home one day and she's in tears. I said, what happened? She said, they call me white trash. I said, who? She said, the communities. And that had an effect on her because as she got older, she actually put a car in caravan and she went to Africa. She went to Africa and said, where's the worst place in Africa? And they said, Uganda. So she drove to Uganda, got to Uganda, she said, where's the worst, worst place in Uganda? I said, Kingcum. So she drove to Kingcum. She pulled up in a war zone under a tree and opened what today is the largest orphanage in the world. It's the only orphanage with its own hospitals, its own schools, its own system. She did that, always aware of our culture, but to her, because of what had taken place, she saw no point here in this country. She went to Africa. She saved over 60,000 lives. 
what happened was rebels came in, they ripped the caravan windows off, the door off, and they're going to rape her and kill her. And she integrated with the spirit. And the moment she integrated with the spirit, you know, we are very powerful people. And the moment you integrate with the spirit, you are very powerful. And the forces, the beings, in other words, that were running the bodies of these rebels, she just said, this is the temple of God. You touch the temple, I will destroy it. Out. They picked off the feet, blown out of the caravan, and they ran and dropped their rifles. What was running them was totally petrified of her. That allowed her to stay in the largest orphanage in the world. She died a few years ago, was awarded Order of Australia. She was known as the Lioness of Africa, or in other words, you know, they call her Mama Irene Gleason. If you go and look up, you'll see the records of her. Her role was to make changes. Mine was here in this country to get the knowledge back into the country. Now, in doing that, in our own bloodline is our knowledge. I have at present 130 years of knowledge in our bloodline of the ancestors of what I'm aware of. Now, as a young child, as a young child, I could activate that understanding and the knowledge that was in there. By the time I was eight, I could make water go on my finger without touching it. By the time I was a teenager, I was doing mind magic. Now, I could do hilarious things at parties, but my question is, what am I doing? How am I doing it? No one ever taught me. No one taught me because it's in the blood. So I spent 50 years trying to understand how the knowledge of the past and what we know in our bloodline, how does it really work, and, and to understand the science behind it. And it is a science. It's just our culture doesn't look at it being a science because they can just do it because it's in the blood. They could just do it. But through stolen generation, the knowledge started to get lost. When they started taking away the children, then there was no, the father had no child to pass the knowledge on. And that child usually would pass on the knowledge to another. Sometimes we'd even have the grandfather incarnate as a grandson to keep the knowledge going through time because it was very important knowledge. You know, our race came through time. It came through and law, law is a universal knowledge. They were given the knowledge about this universe. They were given knowledge as caretakers of the country. A lot has been lost. A lot of communities today have been deprogrammed and reprogrammed. You go into communities today and it's surprising what you start to hear and how few understand. A lot of the old ones still know it. You know, we had a meeting just yesterday with my old 75-year-old ladies and on the communities, and she's fully aware of all the old stuff, all the old, but a lot, as I said, the new people, they totally lost the knowledge. And it's getting this knowledge back in. We were, and we did have the ability, we can make our bodies lighter, and we can run 100 miles a day without touching the ground. We can step in a burra circle, and we can move through time and come out somewhere else. We could go into the energy field because you're not just one body. You go look at the Nungaries in South Australia, how they work. And the way they do that is that I see one body, I look at you, but if I take a photo of Killian photography, I see all these different colours which are different bodies of you. There's really seven bodies, six invisible bodies and one visible body. And take spirit. Spirit's way out here on the end, and it's in what's known as internal hyperspace. And to understand that, internal hyperspace, if I was to ask a question like it's a nice day today, isn't it? And because spirit's internal hyperspace, is not governed by time nor space. So therefore, my intent goes out, your intent to answer me goes out. By the time I ask the question in one word, the answer's there already. Bang, there it is. That's how fast it is. You know, we are surrogating children from around the world. We soak at animals in. I can bring a tree and have a tree talking out of a person on the table. And we look at it, problems that's a trauma of the spirit. Now, if, if we go back to the Royal Commission, what's a Royal Commission state? It stated, Aboriginal people aren't mentally ill, they're spiritually ill. And we need to heal the spirit. We need psychiatrists to understand this field. Well, I'll tell you now, there's not one psychiatrist in the world that understands this field. So therefore, our culture has been totally denied its basic rights of understanding of the trauma of the spirit that comes through time. We also have the epigenetics of time. In other words, the trauma of the stolen generation, say two, three, four, five generations ago, is locked in. That passes down to the children. That passes down through time. As it passes down through time, we have cultures that are living in trauma that happened 200 years ago because they're linked to the epigenetics of the trauma that happened to the ancestors. 
we can access the ancestors and we can bring the great 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 grandmother through and because you're a hologram of time she's talking out of the body on the table we can unfold time and space in those dimensions we can put you outside time and we can make changes to those dimensions our culture had the ability to understand this it had the ability to go into the invisible bodies and adjust the invisible bodies that's what the nungri do they go in the hospitals and they work in the invisible bodies because first off is there's not one person out there that can hand me a thought because your thought is invisible if you can't hand me a thought but you can only put into thought once you put into thought they're visible and you create whatever it is from your thought you can then hand me what you created through your thought but while your thoughts invisible it comes first from the invisible then it transmutes into the visible so your thoughts will come out here in the invisible bodies then it transfers through into the visible body now as i said before just say there's a train wreck the first thing you do is you find the cause of the effect of the train wreck if there's a plane crash they put millions of dollars into finding the cause of the effect of the plane crash well mental health around the world is a it's a human crash it's a metal crash it's an inter interdimensional crash but they're not putting the millions of dollars in to find out the cause of that effect and where it's coming from because it first comes in the invisible out here in the invisible field and transmutes through the visible field now if you change invisible it flows through and changes the visible that's the difference so the starting point that you're coming at is um is um obviously from the right end of hyperspace and um that's something that you've been able to do and um, are now teaching and um, able to explain is that correct that's correct and our culture they knew this they just didn't know the words they didn't know the science part of it but they understood how to do it i mean look i have i have aboriginal people because we've got our very first our very first health and healing training center in Mor in moray field up in uh, sunshine coast and um we were going to open just before COVID 19 and because that's hit so we have our official openings on the official opening is on the 5th of june but over that period of time you know we have people walking off the streets suicidal depression one session they come in one way and they go out glowing and that's common that's common all our train all our staff are trained all our staff are trained in the old cultural way of healing and our shop is open to indigenous or non-indigenous people we don't care what culture you are but what we care about, we're using the old ways. I stopped there. That's Can I just... I was actually going to ask... Oh, sorry, Jeff, go on. Um, We've got a, a global audience, and there's. Uh, you said a word there um, that I'm sure that most of them have stumbled over. You said the Nungaroos or something? Nungaroos? What was that word? The Nungaroos. The Nungaroos. Nungaroos. Nungari. So can yeah, you explain yeah, what the Nungaroos are? Uh, okay. In, in South Australia, the hospital in South Australia have... Aboriginal Nungaris in, and they're the Aboriginal healers. But what they do is they heal the field out here, the invisible field. When they adjust the visible field, I'll give you an example here. We had a man who was T-boned by a semi-trailer. The hospital said, 60 years old, cost too much to rehabilitate, stick in old people's home. His wife got him out, his daughter got him out, and they got us around. So the first time I went in to work on him, his spirit through the impact, bang, got knocked out of body. It couldn't align itself. So when we aligned the body and the carers noticed massive changes. A few months later, we went back in and this time we're going the way of the Nungaroo. In other words, I'm going into the invisible body. I'm filling the invisible bodies. I'm filling the imbalance in the invisible bodies. I'm adjusting the invisible bodies. As I adjust the invisible bodies where the imbalance is, and you can feel it when you understand how to do it, and you've adjust the invisible body, he legs straightens out. His wife said he's never been able to straighten the legs since the accident. That's because the imbalance was in the invisible, but once we adjusted it, it could now flow into the visible. Right. That's what the, Nung that's what the Nungaris do. Which is really similar to the masters of the Far East. The, the same education and knowledge is contained with those dudes as well. Yeah, well, it was part of, it was just part of the natural understanding with the yeah, culture, yeah. you see. But a lot of that's got lost today because it's not passed down from father to son. And we look today and we see, you know, I see all the health workers in communities when I go in there, they're all trained a Western way of understanding. They're all nothing none of them are trained in a cultural way. It's not there. It's there, there's there's no money aside for proper training 
and all the training you look out there all the training out there is a western way of thinking so really what you're saying is like the movie with jack nicholson one flew over the cuckoo nest with uh, nurse ratchet giving you prescription drugs that's that's it that's it nobody's looking at at us as a whole being and i'm not saying this is just for aboriginal people i'm saying this is for our society in general we are multi-dimensional beings in a multi-dimensional world and the invisible bodies are other dimensional bodies we know the spirits out here in the far side way out here but then we know the infrared level now if you go on the infrared level you got other beings on the infrared level you could go and research vietnam what happened in vietnam when they had the night scopes on and the night scopes were based on the infrared with a photon level and the beings they saw they thought at first they were snipers they opened fire and these things started attacking the helicopters these young guys freaked out they shot down other helicopters it wasn't until they started putting cameras in they captured eight to ten foot up to 15 foot wing beings on other dimensions that they were catching with the infrared spectrum on the infrared spectrum which is out here in our okay. body I didn't know we that. have other beings we're multi-dimensional beings we can take on spirits you know you've got to look at it and again this is not looked at and our culture our culture had a totem each each community had its own totem so what a totem the totem meant just just say example it's a turtle it meant as an elder in that community when i die my spirit can enter the body of the turtle and i can watch over the community through the turtle sometimes i'll step out of the turtle's body and i'll appear to my ancestors now i have clients at times young aboriginal kids and we might be working on say my aunt's in here watching oh, that's okay that's fine and they'll see them at the time their aunt appear to them they'll talk to them they say if i go to mental health and tell them they'll lock me up <laughs> yeah of course you see but this is part of culture so why are they denying culture why are they denying what is normal in our culture that we understand and why aren't people being trained correctly in our communities to turn around the massive suicide rate I'm going to show you another thing here. I go into some of these communities and I see the most beautiful spirited kids. Their eyes are glowing. They're alive. You see the spirit alive in these kids. Then they go to school and they start suppressing the spirit. The suppressing leads to depression and depression leads to suicide. That's why the suicide is so high. The spirit, it's, it's, it's used to exploring, it's used to being out, it's used to the glowing, exploring. But when you suppress it, you get the results we get today. The suicide rate is huge. You know, there's a prison um, in Western Australia, Karatha, and it's got 60% Aboriginal people in it. And, you know, 40% of those people, those Aboriginal people, are repeat offenders. Why? Because they're stuck in time. They're stuck in a dimension of time. And nobody other than ourselves knows how to clear the dimensions that they're stuck in so they can move on. People get stuck in these moments of time. And while you're stuck in a moment of time, you are going to repeat the pattern of cycles of similarity. Everything is cycles of time. Go to the greatest part of the galaxy and look. Look at the sun. It's going around a whole other galaxy system. Our world, it goes around the sun in a year. A moon goes around the sun every 28 days. You find the moon spins in a cycle every day. You know, everything are cycles of time. And to find what's happening, once you lock something in, it sets up the cycle of similarity through time and you are stuck in that moment of time until we access where it came from and your spirit knows how where when and why it'll tell us it'll send you there you're reliving it then what we do is put you outside time now to understand that right now you are you live in a three-dimension reality of a past a present and a future to understand that your last steps your past the one year now is your present and the next step, where do I go? Do I go forward, left, right, or straight ahead? What do I do? It's my choice. I'm not there yet. So my next step is my choice. So I live in a three-dimensional reality. If I didn't have a past, present, and future, I'd be frozen in time and I'd go nowhere. So to understand that, as a hologram of time which you are, you had a past, you had a present, and you got a future. But wait. If you're a hologram, you had a past, present, future past, a past, present, future now, and a past, present, future future. So if I in the present can find the cause effect in the past, and if I in the present change the past, I create a new reality for the future from today on. 
yeah, the power of now. That's what they talk about with Buddha as well. Yeah, it, it's knowing how to access it, knowing how to, and we we teach our students all about this. And my thing is is I look at the communities, and it's so frustrating. For as I've said, I, I've been teaching for twenty one years. I've been researching for fifty years. Seeing what could have been changed, not just in our communities, but worldwide. Our knowledge was the most advanced knowledge in the world. And yet it's been ignored. It's been covered up. It hasn't been out there. And there's no funding for anybody to try and get it out there. It's all about a Western way of thinking. And as the pharmaceutical companies pay the universities up to $40 million to run these agendas, what's your answer? All you're going to get is you know, drugs and medication, and you're not going to get what is out of nature and how to understand nature and how to understand the laws of nature to make changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you quite often see that, so nature, you? You see that with nature, don't you, whether you see the plant that could be the actual root cause of a problem, but you'll always see the antidote plant alongside it, don't you? Oh, that's it. That's how nature works. Mm. You see? You've got the cause, you've got the effect together at times. Julia, sorry. Yeah, that's why we're so happy to have you on the show, Steve. Um, and I'm going to ask you about the healing spirit and also about the entrapment that you mentioned earlier. But first, just a big call out to the audience, to a lot of your students are online and friends. So Elizabeth, Amanda, Sandra, Ila, Lorna, Alan, Dee, Jackie, Luana, and Erin, thanks a lot for joining us. And feel free to um, ask any questions directly to Steve through the comment box. So Steve, back to you. Um, you mentioned about these um, people in jails and you've obviously done work with them in drugs that are stuck and frozen in these dimensions of time. And um, when you go in and you help them, are you working with their ancestors or just sort of just sort of no, manipulating what, 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 time to get them out? So no, how does it work? What, what, I, what I do is we understand how the universe and its laws work. And it's really the universe based on mass and geometry. Our culture didn't understand that. But as a scientist... In that field of understanding, it's mass and geometry. So you've got to apply this mass and geometry metaphysically, which we apply. And what we do is, by doing that, I'm at, I access, I get permission, and I access their spirit. And I ask their spirit, you know, the cause of where it's coming from, I find the emotion, I find the age. And next minute, you're back there reliving it. Now, to understand that, we might have an episode that happened two months during conception. And from the moment, because to understand that, your spirit enters as a spark of life that links your heart at the moment of conception. That gives you life. The moment you get that spirit links to your heart, there's your spark of life at conception. From that moment on, your spirit is aware of every single thing that's said while you're in that nine-month period of your mother. So just say two months. And we take people back and we've got a program running not good enough. We go back two months during conception. What's happening, little spirit? Mum and dad are talking about having you aborted. Thank you, little spirit. How does that make you feel? They don't want me. And therefore, they lock in this program of not being wanted. Throughout their life, they set themselves up not to be wanted. There's a pattern set up from that moment in time which will reproduce itself because that's all it knows. That's all its intelligence is. It got programmed as a thought to a thought form when the universe stepped in and says, hey, this thought becomes a thought form, becomes a life form. You can't destroy this life form. Everything in my universe is right to survive. You're the host. Feed the baby. And if the baby only knows anger, then what will happen is it will set you up for more situations of anger so it gets fed. Now, the thought becomes a thought form, becomes a life form. The life form evolves to the next level and becomes an internal entity where it can take over and we have compulsive disorder, bipolar, schizophrenic, name it, labels. It's intelligent. It wants the body. You gave birth to it. Takes you to a whole different level of understanding. Part of that's only part of mental health. I mean, we've got photos here of a pregnant woman. And inside the pregnant woman, watch this. You're taking drugs. Just say you're taking drugs or you're getting drunk. You open wormholes to other dimensions and you let other things in. Now you're going to have sex. You open a wormhole to other dimensions, and these things can take over your body. And they're actually having sex using your body. And what happened is when you fall pregnant, that child can become what's known as a breeder. In other words, something else can be born in there on 
another dimension where the scans can pick them up nowadays. It grows up with the child. As the child becomes a teenager, these things become eight to ten foot tall with wings and demonic features. And when mother says, why did you do that? It wasn't me, mummy. Something made me do it because they take over. When you go in the prison system, do you know how many times we hear some, I was on drugs, I was on alcohol, something took over, it wasn't me. We live in a multidimensional world and we have to understand the dimensions. We actually have photos of, of some of these things in there with a the baby. And that's just one of many. You've got to understand our world at the greatest level of what's understanding. And when we really go back in time and we go back to the time, so let's go back, let's go back to the Knights Templar. So you had the Knights Templar, then you had the Knights of Malta, then you had the Order of the Red Cross, then you had the Thule Society, Jason Society, Round Table of Nine, the Milling Group, Skull and Crossbone, Fabian Lodge, Orion Lodge, Green Orion Lodge, the Masons, the Freemasons, etc. One of the rules and the laws of the universe is he who enters the game of another is subject to laws of the game. So when you go into a secret society and you swear an oath and allegiance, apart from committing treason to the country, you put these beings at a higher level than the people of the country. And because you've entered the game, it's a very subtle takeover of manipulation of your body. And if you think humans are running this world today, I've got news for you, they're not. Back on the money. We yeah, are, the, the we are in war with another dimension right now. We bring these mm. beans up, we take them out. We have them shape-shifted sometimes on the table. Our world is not what we think it is. You've really got to understand we are multidimensional beings in a multidimensional world. And we need to take back control of our world because the key to this world is this is our dimension. This world is our world and our dimension. These beings are coming from another dimension into our dimension and they need they need to let us know what they're going to do and we need to agree to go into the game for them to access us. If we don't go into the game, they cannot access us. And because they're coming to our dimension, they violate law by coming to our dimension and we can deal with anything that comes into our dimension from another dimension when well, you understand how to deal with it. So it's about consent. By consent. They need you to consent. That's why they tell you everything they're going to do. It's out there. It's out there in front of you. They put it out there for you to know. A lot of the time they'll put the big headlines of the newspapers up here, but inside is the little print of what they're going to do. You've really got to become aware of this game and observe the game for it is. They control our media. They control the pharmaceutical company. They control the governments. They control the church. Look, this game has been going for thousands of years, and we're coming to the end of the cycle. 2023 is the end of the cycle. This now is, is part, what's going on now is part of Agenda 21, the start of it. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at the agenda, look how many people can terminate in this country, in America and in England. And I, you know, we had the list. If you go into you know, Deagle, you can go and track it down, you can find the list of all the countries and the depopulation, the targets that are set up. You've really got to understand our world today because when enough people wake up to our world and enough people wake up to this game, enough people wake up and take back their own power, and I mean metaphysical power of the spirits of themselves awakening from the amnesia that they're in and taking back control, we are very powerful beings. And we need people to wake up. We need more people to wake up to what's really going on in our world. Funny that, because I was actually saying, they've been asking me, what do you think? I said, don't watch mainstream news, mate. Don't watch current affairs shows. Don't read the newspapers. It's, it's got to just talk to people and, and communicate with people and you'll find that there's an energy shift when you start relating to people. And so, but I said, I've got to tell you, it's not from this world, is it? It's, it's, we've got a, a no. spiritual war that's going on. Exactly. exactly. It's other dimensions. It's these mother dimensions that have been here for thousands of years but they set up the game of manipulation control. You've got to go back and look at the church. And the early churches had the gargoyles and winged serpents on them, all the temples. And, and they were over the entrance because the entrance was for entrancement. And they would entrance you through the entrance and down to be altered at the altar. Yeah, you, know, you really got to look at the game of manipulation through time that's taken place. I mean, look at the Pope's new building today, the, the cathedral. Look at his new cathedral, audience cathedral. Shape of reptilian, reptilian scales on the wall, reptilian eyes. 
He sits between the fangs and people enter through the mouth of the dragon. If you never see him, go and look for the, the Pope's audience hall, the new yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Steve, you mentioned that when you were four, you remembered who you were. So, it, you know, in that long game that we're talking about, yeah. <laughs> it's been going on for thousands of years. Yeah. Um, you know, you're here in this incarnation, Jeff and I are in this incarnation, but sort of, you know, sort of what, what do you remember? What's your role? Well, I remember, first off, I remember okay. who I was. And I was one of the old clever men of the past. I, I, I used to, when I was only six years old, I'd be standing outside on one leg out the back. Mum would say, where would you learn that? And I said, that's how you rest when you're hunting, Mum. Yeah, I just, I just knew all – it's a knowingness in you that you know. You know, in my lifetime, I've teleported across a room. I've made my body lighter. I've made water go in my finger without touching it. I had one episode where a stargate virtually opened in front of me, a wormhole, and I could see another dimension. But every time it happened, it, I wasn't ready. And, <laughs> like, shock, bang, bang, it closes, you know. But in the past, this was normal – and our children were taught about how to understand these dimensions, how to understand how to move through time. We're not taught anything. I'm just lucky that the knowledge I had and my grandmother and my mother would assist to develop it and they knew the future. And they told me you know, where we were going in the future. They told me, my sister, what she was doing you know, and, and myself and the knowledge we had to get back there. And that's where we are today. But they knew the future. That was normal, you know. It's the same as they used to say to me, our culture always knew if we have visitors. They knew before they come here. And the reason they do that is because over here, over here, deja vu. Deja vu is preordained. It's happened in the past. It's happened in the present. And it will happen again in the future. It's preordained. But if I in the present change the past, I create a new outcome for the future. So every single individual we go back and change time with, they're changing their future. Nothing has to be the way it was. And then when you get with our group, we go further on a bigger scale. Yeah, that's that's what I like about it. It's um, you know, the timelines we can we are not just the actors but also the directors and we can change the script. And that's uh, it. I'm, and and I'm knowing so happy to hear that you're you're teaching that. Yeah, we as I said, we're in we've trained over we've trained students from forty two countries around the world. Because it's not just this country. But what I I'm, is, is my thing is I want people to know the knowledge that our culture had. We were brilliant in the things we could do before intervention. And most of that knowledge has been lost. And it's about getting them back. You know, we get a lot of young kids, Aboriginal kids coming in and, you know, they're on drugs and other things. We, we clear them up. But in amongst them, I see in their spirit and, and I see – They've got all the knowledge in their bloodline still. It's there. We can wake up so many of them to the memories of the past because it's already there in their cells. And that's what this is about, awakening them, making them aware of the past. Now, we want to train more Aboriginal kids to get back in their own communities so they can clear their own communities. But it's not just Aboriginal people. This is across the board. I don't care what country you come from. We all have spirits as we have a soul. And you've got to see the difference between the spirit and the soul. There's a difference. And to understand that. The day you're born, every cell in your body has a holographic memory of all your ancestors through time. So I can bring the great, great, great grandmother through and have a talking out of you. Because I just access a hologram of time and she's talking out of you. I can unfold time and space with her to the trauma back in time. I can put her outside time, I can change the future. That then affects all the generations underneath that trauma because what takes place is Morphogenic resonance now takes place. And that makes changes to all the dimensions. We can go back through time over here to what your spirit has brought through time and the trauma through time. You know, it's funny because I, um, I've had some Aboriginal men on my table, black as the ace of spades, past life. One's a Scotsman, one's an Irishman, one's a light horseman. <laughs> you know, you're in yeah, the body you're meant to be in. Well. Yeah, you're the body you meant to be. I, I was yeah. working with a Vietnamese engineer, and he was like, he was like black in Africa, <laughs> driving fast yeah. cars and with lots of girls. And he was like, it's a monk yeah. in this life. So he had a bit of a shock. 
And yes. there's a Russian like magnet in the next one. So it's just amazing. Yeah. And and we and the point is that people get stuck in the trauma of time. They get stuck in the death trauma. And there's we found now it's a mathematical formula for it. And we find in the first three and a half years that you set it up. In other words, if I was violent in the past life to my children, then I'll be born to violent parents in this life. For me to learn what I created for another. It's about balance. And that'll happen the first three and a half years. If I go through a death trauma, then that death trauma usually finds activating the first seven years. And the reason being the seven is that the seven is the change in the mass and geometry universe. Your one is a singular, which is the law of intent. Two is duality, where, say, you and your spirit agree, creates the triangle, which is the three, which is the law of agreement. Now, that law of agreement is valid through time and space for eternity. Once you made that agreement, it's solid for eternity. Until you unfold time and space back to where you made the agreement thousands of years ago and you change it back in time, you change it for the future, the doorway's closed off and they can't get back in the future. I understand that. Four's a square between the visible and invisible world. Five, you call something in. That's why the pentagon is a pentagram because it's worked with other dimensions. Six is entrapment within you. Seven, it changes you. Eight, it sets up repeat over and over throughout your life. Nine releases the dimension, creates zero, which is 360 degrees, and ready to another dimension of reality. So it's all based on mass and geometry within those one to zero numbers of how this universe works and how to apply it. Now, when you really understand the universe and its laws, then you understand that the law of agreement between yourself and your spirit between two parties, it creates a pyramid. Now, when you look at the Pyramid of Giza, you understand the Pyramid of Giza smack in your face. It's saying this is the invisible world controlling the visible world. The invisible world controls the visible world. That's what the Pyramid of Giza is set there, there in your face to let you know it's a hologram of time of control. And if you go and you take the pyramid structure and you take cause, action, reaction, in other words, if you take Fibonacci mathematics from the very top of that pyramid and you do exactly three cycles of time, three cycles exactly, it finishes at one to the square to the cube, 144. Universal maths, one to the square. Now, it's exactly the past and the present sets up the future at the base. That all represents the invisible world, and the base invisible world is a square. Now, the square squares itself, one to the square to the cube. It squares itself in the first form of the cube, which is the first form of platonic geometry, and from that comes the tectonic doctrine octahedron, which is crystallized formation of your bone structure, your consciousness, of physical reality. So first is invisible world, then comes the visible world. And that's why the square is a link between the visible and the invisible world, which is the base of pyramidal structure, and under that is the visible world. Above it is all the invisible world. It's knowing how to apply it because you're, really, you're using the universal mass and geometry to apply it with a client. And when you understand it, it works every time. That's the beauty of this. The universe has its own laws, but you must understand those laws and apply those laws. So when you said Fibonacci, you're working on 1.618 in terms well, of... No, no, you take the Fibonacci mathematics, the past. In other words, it starts at zero plus one equals one. One and one equals two. Two and one equals three. You know, three and two is five. Five and three is eight. Eight and five Correct. is 13. 21, 34, 55, 87, up yep. to 144. It's exactly three cycles of time. The past and the present sets up the future. It is the past, it is the present, it is the future. It fits exactly three cycles, one to the square to the cube. Let's you go into Fibonacci mathematics and all nature is linked to Fibonacci sequence of creation. Yep, past that. and present sets up the future. And that's the same with us. Once we create a thought, it becomes a thought form, becomes a life form. The past and present sets up the future and it goes from the invisible world into the visible world where it locks into the structure of the physical body of reality. When we access that and we change the invisible, it flows through and changes the visible because people become stuck in a moment of time. Now that moment you're stuck in is going to reproduce, 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 reproduce. You're stuck in time until we release it. And that's an example, as I said, Karatha Prison over there in Western Australia. 40% of the Aboriginals in the prison system over there are repeat offenders. They can be cleared in one session. Because all they do, they're stuck in the moment of time, of the first time they committed the crime, and they're stuck in the pattern. They're stuck in the moment of time, and they're going to reproduce because 
That's how the universe works. The life form has to reproduce itself for survival. Until we find it, we take it out and we change it. And all of a sudden, desire is gone. We replace that moment in time to a new moment of time. So coming back to the spiritual war yes. of, of interdimensional time, yes. that would then su suggest then if you've got sufficiently awakened souls on this earth plane, collectively could go back in time to uh, uh, close that portal. Would that be correct? Uh, if, 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 you have the mass, see, yeah. if you have the masses, if the masses make an agreement, then you have the masses of people. Individually, independently, individually, independently, you have the ability to make changes to your time tracker of the past and the present and the future. You have developing development within you. You can change your future. But if the masses got together and they agreed, then the masses can change the future as well. Because nothing has to be the way it was. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And, and we see that all the time with clients. You know. Yep. And, and you talk and we, about the objects on your website in terms of um, just the different levels, okay. of frequency. That I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll explain the octaves. And the octaves is that to understand spirit, and this will blow people away right now. Um, first, of all, I'll explain first is the difference between the soul and the spirit. So, the day you're born, every cell in you has a holographic memory within the soul of all the ancestors through time. That's how we access the ancestors by bringing through the hologram. The day you're born, your mother external to internal. In other words, everything you take on by your mother, everything you take on by your father, everything you take on by the church, everything you take on by the government, everything you take on by your friends, everything you take on external to internal locks in the cell as part of the soul. The soul is experiences. Now, to understand that, psychiatry and psychology is study of the soul. They're studying your experiences of the physical experiences and then statistics across that, and then they get the statistics of the average of what's taking place. Everything external to internal is part of the soul. The moment of conception, your spark of life, your spirit enters. Now, the moment the spirit enters and spark of life, it's the drive of the vehicle. It enters the heart and the bloodline. And spirit says, I'm here for you. Tell me what you want. I'll rearrange the universe for you. But you see, we don't. We're not taught to. Aboriginal culture, that was normal. Before they cut down a tree, they'd ask the spirit of the tree, can I cut you down? And the spirit of the tree would say, no. But the old fellow over there, he don't mind. So they'd go to the old tree, over, and the old fellow over in the old tree there, he'd say, yeah, I'm ready to evolve. So they'd cut him down and make the canoe. Before we killed a kangaroo, we'd sit around the dream time, and we'd put out telepathically to the kangaroo to donate itself. It would donate itself. If I kill that kangaroo without me getting permission from that kangaroo, I violate law. That means that kangaroo can continue living in me. Now, we have people out there with Tourette's, barking like a dog and clucking like a chicken. We often go in and we take out animal spirits out of people and all of a sudden they're more barking like a dog or clucking like a chicken. Yeah, okay. You've got to understand these laws of the universe. If you go and kill a human, you go to war. I've worked on soldiers from Somalia, Afghanistan, Iraq, Vietnam, and a few other places around the world and we have a 95% success rate of clearing these soldiers, usually in one session. Example, I've had soldiers on my table 40 years after the Vietnam War, and we have spirits of Viet Cong speaking Vietnamese out of the body. I sent him back to what took place. Came into my and shot my wife, shot my child, turned the gun on me. I felt nothing but bitterness and anger. I wanted to destroy him. He jumped the body. He's been there for 40 years, great mental trauma. The moment I unfold time and space and put him outside time, I change the future, I release the spirit, and instantly the mental trauma disappears. I've got a lady who's in a car accident. What's this? She's had three spinal operations. She comes to me riddled with pain. I put it on the table. The spirit indicates cause effect 18. Go there. Next minute, she's screaming hysterically on the table. I forgot, I forgot. I totally wiped it from my mind. I totally forgot what happened. I had a head-on collision in a car when I was 18. Thank you. What happened? The other woman died. Thank you. So I check what's known as reciprocal exchange of energy. And sure enough, the spirit of the other woman's in there. She comes up, swearing her head off. You know, the bitch, the bitch. I'll fix her for killing me. I said, spirit, listen to me. Everything's happening now has happened before. Everything's happened now is going to happen again. You don't want the same thing to happen again, do you? No. Let's change time. 
I unfold Thomas Bates, I change the future, and I released her. How'd she die? She died of spinal injuries. The moment she jumped the woman's body, that woman's been living with spinal injuries for 40 years, three spinal operations, nothing's changed. The moment I released the spirit, the spinal issues disappeared. Um, I hear you because when I was over in um, America with the Navajo uh, medicine man, we were introduced to a, a gentleman there um, who was doing the um, sweat lodge. And I had a chat with him. I said, what are those medals? He said, oh, one's a, a um, medal of uh, Congress and the other one's um, a Purple Heart. I said, well, what actually happened? He said, oh, I saved my platoon from an uh, Iraqi soldier. And he um, and this guy put a bayonet into this um, Native American. He opened up and he had this humongous big scar, went right up here. And I said, you actually lived this year, but I killed the Iraqi soldier. And um, I was sent stateside, and so I got these little medals here for, you know, to say thank you. And um, when I got back home to the, well, the community, grandfather put on a sweat. So in the sweat, <clears throat> they burnt all the American soldier stuff and Granddad realised what had to, had to be happening. He said the Iraqi soldier came through and thought That's he was right. in hell. And so because the grandfather's work in the ceremony, and the next second the Iraqi soldier grabbed his uh, grandson and rushed him out of the actual sweat lodge. And then he, he actually then tripped. Grandfather came out with a bucket of water, threw it over him, and then the Iraqi soldier left the body. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah look, we, we see it all the time. We see it all the time. You know, I can tell some of the cases where we have had mental health driving people down to us. They've been in the books for two years. And we go in, work on them, we send them back in time. You know, we've got a couple of cases. The example is, um, just to give you how this works, I've got, I've got a woman who, who's paranoid. Um, she's been stalked. So go look at the stalking. Go back to her past life. I've got a woman walking through, through a park. She's been followed. She's walking faster. He's walking faster. She's aware she's been followed. The last memory you've been aware she's been followed. He grabs her around the throat. He strangles her. Anyway, he kills her. The last memory of death was been was been last memory of death being followed and, and strangled. So she has a right to continue living. So she jumps the body of the person who did this. The person that did this and two spirits come through time. The man in the past is now the lady. But the spirit of the girl who has been stalked is still in the field. Her last memory of death is still trapped in there. So what takes place is it's still living the trauma of that moment of time because it's stuck in time. And the moment we go back, we find it, clear it, change time, release the spirit instantly, the compulsive disorder stops. Right. You know, there are so many areas that we're looking at. And to give you an example, look, I've got a great case here where we took killing photograph of a woman. And, and um, this woman, she, she's in America. She goes doctors and no one's been able to help her anyway we finally it goes back six years old she goes back and they moved to a new house and belonged the uncle and the uncle he he um he got a venereal disease and he thought he'd go through the whole house so he, he killed his four-year-old daughter killed his 17 year old son he committed suicide and they inherited the house so in the killing photograph i've actually got three spirits in the body and you can see the spirits in the field you see so i go in after the spirits in the field and I bring up the boy. This is, I was having a shower. Dad walked in with a shotgun and shot me. He didn't want to die. She took pity, so I moved in the body. I brought up the little girl. My daddy just shot me. My daddy just shot me. Why did he shoot me? Why did he shoot me? So she's actually stuck in this moment of time. You know, so as, as she's stuck in the moment of time, what takes place is that to her, this is 40 years ago. You know, my daddy just shot me. Five seconds yeah, ago. My daddy just shot me. But he actually sort of 40 years ago. Yep. She's stuck in this moment of time and she'll continue and she could continue for another thousand years being stuck in this moment of time because that's the last memory that she's stuck in. So people get stuck in moments. You know, we had, we have so many different cases of understanding how time works and it's a dimension of its own. But if you're stuck in this moment, then that moment will keep repeating and repeating and repeating. So we go back again to the prison system. The amount of repeat offenders in the prison system, they keep repeating the same pattern because they're stuck in time. And they can be cleared very easily once we understand how 
and we go and we look at it, which we've done, and we get massive results with it. You see, we are a multidimensional being in a multidimensional world, and you've got to look at all these dimensions out there because there are bigger forces out there in other dimensions. When you take drugs, you actually open this wormhole into another dimension, one of these outer bodies. And because your defences are down, what's coming is out of body now can set dimension to your body. And they want your body. So what happens is you get the voice in the head. Now, a lot of those voices in the head are, you know, idiot, not worth living, kill yourself. Because that's these beings in there. If they can get you to kill yourself, then what you're saying is, I don't want my vehicle. And they're saying, we do. We're waiting in line. For the future. You really got to see the multi-dimension of how the world works. You know, we're, we're never been taught the reality of our world. So much has been kept hidden from us. But it's about time we start to understand just how this world works because we can change time. We can change our dimensions yes. of time. And that's the beauty of this. Yes, yeah, Steve, I'm so glad that you've um, just spelt it out because I know so many people um, fight with those voices in their head and they just haven't, they always think it's their own voices or that they're crazy. And that's the only options they've been presented. And, um, you know, when, when they will hear this and they'll listen to you, they will understand exactly what happened. They well, I'm going to show I'm just going to show you this. I, I, I don't like showing this on air, but I will just show it to you. Okay. I want you to have a look at this. Okay. There's a pregnant woman, and look at the gargoyle in there with the baby. That's a scan of a pregnant woman with a baby and the gargoyle. That little thing will take over the child. It'll grow up, as I said, when that child is a teenager, that thing will be 8 to 10 foot tall with the wings of demonic features in another dimension. It manipulates the child into doing things. And when mother says, why did that? wasn't me, mummy. Something made me do it. It's these beans. You go in the prison system, and I'll tell you what, you've got so many prisons being taken over by the dimensions through the drugs and the alcohol by these forces. And there's only one of many that we're aware of. Our world is not what we think it is. Hey, uh, you mentioned um, you got a place up in um, Murrayfield. More I feel. Yeah, we, we have the very Murray. first, it's the very first health and training center. We've got Is that what you call it? Great, oh, just, yeah, it, it's our very first health and training center in More I feel shopping center. And we have a great team of, of practitioners there, all taught the old way, understand the old way. And we're get, getting fabulous results with our with the clients that are coming in. Yeah, we recognize, we've been recognized by docs for the changes in some of the kids. Been recognised by NDIS, been recognised the police liaison officer, been recognised by the justice system. Actually, the justice system wants talking about transferring kids to us instead of locking them up, so we can clear the dimensions of the repeat offenders. Because these young kids are repeat offenders all the time; they're just stuck in time. Need to be cleared. You know, mental health. We have them driving clients down to us now. Big clients have been on their books and, and they can't get results with, and we're getting results. That's great news. And if people are uh, listening to you from overseas, do you offer Zoom sessions? How can they get in touch with you? Um, uh, there's two ways. I, I have students. I have students, as I said, 42, from 42 countries. I have a lot of top students, and I have a teacher in America and UK. I have some top students out there and some top students. Can Other than that, what we do, if you're in a country where, you can't, where they can't get to a practitioner, then we have a top surrogacy team, in other words. We surrogate the spirit anywhere in the world in to someone else on the table. Our team will work on it, send it back, and we get changes. Because remember, spirit's linked to internal hyperspace. It's not governed by time or space. Yeah. We work on so many kids around the world with problems come in. And, and let me talk about the kids. This is another game. This is another game. And, and let's say houses. I'll give you an example. Got a little, little girl in Canada. She, she's... She's a niece of somebody very famous. So we worked on a girl who's had entities. We surrogate her in, took out the entities, and she's doing great. Mother's, the aunt's raving about her. Five days later, the aunt contacted me. She said, what's gone on? I said, what's up? She came in last night swearing like a trooper, told the mother she's going to kill us herself and she's going to kill the mum. And that last night, she said, the whole family went berserk. Okay, there's something I need to know. I said, don't want to talk to you anymore. I said, you have the mother contact me. There's something I need to know. The mother emailed me, and the last sentence in the email in brackets said, before I bought the home, it was owned by drug addicts. Thank you. 
These drug addicts have called in entities, spirits, and a whole range of other dimensional forces that are in the house. When they left, there's the other being stayed behind. They bought the house. When the little girl got cleared, she came home, she's vacant possession. They're trying to see who can jump and take the body. So we had to go and clear the house. We cleared the house. Then we go clear her again. Now she's sleeping peaceful at night. Mm -hmm. I had a big insurance company do a similar thing. And the big insurance company, the big insurance company, what took place was that it's it um we did a job for it before and they were happy. And this time they said, We got staff doing things out of character. Can you come and check the building? So we checked the building upstairs, down, checked it all. And and what happens is um, I found out the problem they had last time, so they broke their lease on the building, bought a new building. So I'm going through the building and I said, go check upstairs, help yourself. So I go through upstairs and I go downstairs. I walk downstairs towards the back of the shop and I, I, I'm just, you know, spirit, show me what I'm dealing with. It. And I feel, whoa, I can feel like a stargate. I feel it. Wow. I stepped into it. Wow, it's full of spirits, entities and all the beans, a whole range of other stuff. I stepped out and went back upstairs. I said, I found it. I said, it's the back of your shop. I said, tell me, I said, what was this before you bought? The local morgue. There's so much stuff in there. He laughed. It used to be a local brothel. So what happened is all these people were bringing their clients in and leaving their spirits and entities behind. When they left, they left the spirits and entities there. When they moved the building, they try and jump their staff a bit hanky-panky. So I had to bring them all through his secretary, clear the building, clear them. A few days later, he's back to normal again. Do you understand? If you buy a house or you move in a house that's had drug addicts in it and there's other things in that house, that can affect you and the kids. Those places need to be cleared. When when real estate agents go in, what do they do? They go in and they do a clean out of the house, but they don't clear the metaphysics of the house. They don't clear what's in the house. Do you understand? Yep. Different yeah. game. Yeah. So we've got a question from one of the audience, um, Andrew Fizzi. He's saying, I think destructive voices are quite common in weakened individuals. Can individuals... Um, Remove those evil invaders themselves. Good luck. Listen, if you've opened a wormhole to another dimension by taking drugs and you let them in, do you think they're going to leave? They've now got a new home. Who wants to be homeless? They're not going to want to leave. You've got to know how to apply the laws and how to control the game to get these beans out, and that's the difference. It's known how to apply the laws of taking control of the game to get them out. There is on the odd occasion, sometimes on occasion, you hear people say, that's it, I give the, say smoke it, I give up smoking, that's it, that's right, smoke's away. Well, they just got rid of that entity, didn't they? But he's got to find another body now, he's out there on the loose. He'll find someone else, he can he get his smokes from, you see. I had an 85-year-old, an 85-year-old, um, woman and her her 50 year old son at a birthday party she said I walked in the birthday party she said and there's coke on the table she before I know it I'm snorting coke Here she's 85 years old snorting coke you see she says why do I do that I said well I'm going to show you here's your son and here's the coke entity and they decided to have a party they integrated the moment they integrated in that party and you entered the game you got seduced and taken the coke that's how subtle it is who you enters the game of another subject laws the game. Well, it really go. sounds like we could all do with learning the laws of the law. Cheapest, yeah. So you're talking about law, L O R E, aren't you? L O R E. And if you go in the dictionary, you've got the word L O R E. It's actually universal knowledge. And that's exactly what it is. It is the knowledge of the universe. And what happens is our culture had the knowledge of the universe, they had it. Part of stolen generation was to wipe the knowledge by these beings. They didn't want you to know they existed. And if you go into the future, you'll see their plans for the future. In the future, they want to get rid of the word spirit and soul, so it doesn't even exist. And instead, that's why in the future, you're not allowed to call mother, mother, or father, or father. Because in the end, there's no such thing as mother and father. It'll be you are the parent. But the child will be genetically engineered in the future. That's what their aim is. You've really got to understand this game that's going on today, and therefore you'll be given a child that's now got an implant that's monitoring you constantly as a parent. You know, look at the, you know, these plans, I've been monitoring 
and I've been researching for 50 years. This plan's been put out there for a long time. You know, I know what's going on. I know what's going on in the country. I know the plans. I know they're unfolding. I know their plans are for the future. But we are throwing a spanner in their works because first it's the invisible world and then it's the visible world. If we change invisible, we can change the visible. And we constantly have our research group and we target targets around the world and we make changes. Do you do that surrogate, surrogate way or do you go and ask the, the soul that you're looking at overseas and ask for permission well, I, and then you do I, it? I, you? I bring in every spirit that's been killed by the actions of another, the actions and inactions of one that's violated law and creating the death of another. I can bring those spirits through and I can allow those spirits to deal with their perpetrators and we can change events of time. Before I do anything, before I do anything, I will spend hours sometimes, I'll spend hours researching, okay, make sure we're not violating law, what we're doing. We can't evade the game of another. I cannot bring somebody else through that's created another reality. I can't bring them through and interfere with their reality because that's their reality. But what I can do is if their reality is responsible for the death of another, I can bring the spirits through, make spirits aware, and then deal with their perpetrators. And that's a different story. See, we go around, we clear the genocide of the past that's taken place around the country. We go and bring all the spirits through. We find out what took place. We unfold time and space. We change the future and release those spirits that are no longer earthbound to move on. You know, our world is not what we think it is. We have to really understand the programming that's taken place for 2,000 years of the human species. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's so important that we all take in, take charge of our own hologram and um, clean up, clean up. Yeah, and and the key to it all is awareness. Yeah, we can't change anything that we're not aware of. But the moment we're aware of something, we have the ability to make changes to it. Mm. Steve, one last question from me. Um, you've got this, the and this is your logo, the... Healing spirit on the on um, written on Australia against the um, black and red. Is That's that correct. a specific healing spirit, or you know, why did you choose that? Okay, what we are doing is we are healing the spirit of the individual of its trauma. Just like the soul can have trauma, the spirit can also be traumatized. I'll give you one example. I have a model in Europe. She comes in. She says, I get on the catwalk every day in front of thousands, no problem. But I wake up with anxiety every morning on the table. You go back to 16. I remember, but a friend come and stay and slept on the lounge room floor. I remember is the soul. It remembers the experiences. Thank you. I acknowledge that. Step aside. Spirit come forward. Spirit, what took place? He drugged the body and he raped me. He drugged the body and he raped me. I couldn't wake the body. So the spirit was now traumatized because it couldn't wake the body. The soul had no memories could be put to sleep. Do you understand? In Aboriginal culture, the spirit's been traumatised through time. Many people have been traumatised through time. And the spirit has a trauma that needs to be cleared. Sometimes it's the soul that needs to be cleared. But they're different. Yeah, thank just you like, for Just like you have a forward and you have a backwards, you have a left, you have a right, there's always an equal opposite. The nodal points point zero. So the external world and the internal world are all the programs of the soul. The internal world, the external world is a spirit. It drives a vehicle. It's here for you. Tell me what would you like me to do? And it'll rearrange the universe for you. Now, this is another thing. We deal with people at times that have had heart transplants, and this is a beauty. Not one university is doing it. So you take the heart out of somebody, and before you put the heart in, they're dead. And you've got to massage the heart, hit it, kick it off, now, when you put the heart in, the spirit's connected to the heart, so you actually put another spirit in the person. So I've got a man, I've got a man who's had a heart transplant. Put him on the table. Do you know who owns the heart? No. I called through a spirit of the heart. 56-year-old woman, what happened? Bought a BMW, what happened? I had on collision of BMW, I was killed. Thank you. So I go look at it, we go to change the dimension. And he says, as he comes back, oh my God, what? He said, I went out and bought a brand new BMW. I've nearly had three head-on collisions in that BMW. How many people with hearts die the same way of the heart recipient? They have the same pattern in the heart of the program, which has never been cleared. All heart transplants need to be cleared 
of the programs of the past. Let's go into old age people. Old age. Why do people as they age revert back in time? It's a universal law. The universe is saying, deal with stuff now so you don't take it in the future. So it allows them to go back to the traumas they're stuck in back in time so they can deal with them before they move on. Not being dealt with. It's endless. Holographic is endless. Because the spirit of the individual knows how, where, when and why, no matter how far back in time or no matter how many generations ago it took place. It can find and access it. You're reliving it. And it can change the dimension of time that you're stuck in. I, um, I take it the same way if you're suffering from grief from a, a partner who's died or in, in my case here is my mum. It's been three years you know, since I've actually come to terms with it this, mo this morning and oh, a big howling session I just cried like nobody's business. It's taken that length of time just to um, release, you know, uh, my mother's passing, which was, you know, like it's quite bloody traumatic in itself. But I noticed that the, the soul, well, the spirit of myself, not only did it start bringing up all this energy coming up and it was then it started to voice itself and then it started to tone the next second it was just this big crescendo of sound coming through and it was going through the octaves and um it probably went for about 40 minutes uh, but i have to say that um i felt a huge big clearing um this afternoon just to be able to be free of that um locked in energy okay can i make an assumption here it's only gonna be an assumption but assumption of similarity is what we've done with before. Yeah. And this is a common thing. When somebody dies close to us, we don't want them to leave. And we don't want them to leave, we actually trap their spirit in us. And we trapped in there. Then what happens is comes a time when we're really ready to let go of it. And all the emotions around what took place. At the same time, we bring it up and we let that spirit move on. Because it can't move on, it's trapped in the body. You know, I had a, I had a woman one day and she went back to the showground in Sydney. She's four years old. And she's on the grandfather's shoulders. And the grandfather has a heart attack and drops dead. I don't want Poppy to leave. I don't want Poppy to leave. So Poppy gets trapped in the field. Forty years later, she gets to me on the table. And I go and bring up Poppy. And the first thing he said was, get me out of here. <laughs> he couldn't move on because <laughs> he was trapped in the field. He had no right. choice. That's it. She trapped him. That's it. You know? Yeah, so that's, the same thing for, that's the same thing for parents whose kids have died in accidents. Yep. They keep on reliving and they haven't got that closure. They keep on trapping those kids' spirits from moving on. Yep. And they can bring them through time. Yeah, they can bring them lifetimes. They can still be there. You know, we're surprised how many times we go with people and we send them back in time to some major trauma that's taking place way back in time and those spirits are in them still. And we have to – it's the same as if you, in a past, if you killed someone, then that spirit's right to continue living in you, but it'll come through time. And what happens is both spirits can come through time. Now, the most powerful of the two spirits will evolve into the future. And the person, the other person is trapped in the field. They both come through time. And you've got to find the one trapped in the field. You've got to change time. You've got to release it out of the field. Once, you release, them out of, once cool. you release them out of the field, are you just taking them back to that point of time where they can then... We, 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 go, yeah. we go back in time. We change the past in the present. And we have the person create the new future. We have the spirit create the new future. So in the future, it's not actually killed. It lives on. They spend time together, you see. Yeah. So we change that future for the future and then release the spirit for the future. Okay, yeah, that's different because you're working um, from both perspectives, not just the... the that, that's right. And to understand that it has to be done from both perspectives because both parties are part of the creation of that reality which links that Fibonacci mathematics, which links that pyramidal structure of a dimension of reality. And you've got to deal with no, both parties in that same dimension. Yeah, the duality, the one to two, and then the agreement that you mentioned. I get That's it. it. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Hey, um, you know when uh, couples have been married for 30, 40, 50 something years, yeah. and one partner dies, very quickly the other one dies as well, don't they? Sometimes they just give up without the other partner because both partners – sometimes become part of the one energy as a unit. And sometimes the other person, you've heard the saying of a broken heart. Yeah. So they die of a broken heart. In other words, 
they decide that they want to stay with their partner. They decide they don't want to live without their partner. So they make that choice to move on. And it's a free will choice. You know, I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with death. To a degree, you've got to understand that I can guarantee if you're born, you're going to die. But you don't really die. You just evolve. And we talk about, we talk about earlier, we talk about the octaves. Okay. You know you came through the ferment, through the gases, through the liquid, through the rocks, through the plankton, through the plant life, through the insect life, through the animal life and the human life. You're evolving. And next you'll move into another dimension of reality. And once you do, you start the low level of octave and you move through the octaves of the different forms. And you evolve. We have low level humans that will mutilate and kill not think twice. But as they move up and they come back to be mutilated and killed, they don't like it. And the universe says, well, it was your creation. So you ready to change it? And we keep moving up till we get to a stage where we understand this bigger game and we decide, okay, it's time to move on to the new dimension of reality into the future. And then we have others that say, I want to go back into their game. I like to be manipulated. I don't want to think for myself. I'd rather them think for me. And the universe says, okay, no trouble. The universe gives you what you want. It's there for you. Right? So if, if you were, let's go back to a past life. Yeah. And and on your deathbed there, you, you say you're sorry and um, look, I'll be there in the next life. I'll look after you, protect you. Um, that obviously is what you're saying actually will actually manifest. Well, it will. It will. Hey, listen, I've got a great one. I've got a great one. I've got this here. I've got this woman and she says, I don't know why I'm married with my husband. She says, I can't stand him, but I can't leave him. We go back to a past life in India and she's a beggar on the streets. She's only 10 years old. She's got a broken arm. He takes her in. Feel sorry for taking it. She says, I'll always be indebted to you. I'll always be there for you. So what happens is that she becomes his mistress. She's been for 20 years. He goes out, get drunk one night, comes home with a friend. He wants to share the friend with her. And she felt like the beggar in the street. So he went and jumped over the cliff and she committed suicide. But she said, I'll always be indebted to you. I'll always be there for you. She's come back indebted to that man, for the man, to do everything for the man because of what she said. And she never changed that program. The universe gives you what you want. Whatever you tell it, it's going to give it. Do you understand? Yeah. you got to undo those oaths and vows and curses. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. That's it. you really got to think about what am I saying and locking myself into a future. So what about programming in this life when you've got immediate family um, or friends that are really, uh, what's the word? Um is it manipulation or projecting their um, aspects onto you, how you should be living your life, you know, or That's right. what should be Look, going with you? Each and, every, each and every person has their own created reality. And what takes place is when people are unsure of their reality, then they try to get other people to come into their reality. And if you come into their reality, that makes them feel better because they must be right because you came into their reality. You see? A lot of time they're very insecure, so they're trying to get you to agree to them that makes them feel better. The yeah. point is, stay back at point zero. Be the observer. If you're the observer of the game, you don't react to the game. You just observe the game for what is around you. And as the observer, you'll see things that others don't see. And you stay in your own game. Everybody's trying to suck you into their game. Because remember, we have a lot of life forms out there in other people. And those life forms need to be fed. They need to get a reaction of you for them to get fed. The moment you react, they get fed. If I don't react, they starve. And they've got to find another body to go and get fed. Right. Yeah, the, in the Chinese, they've got the, as well, they've got the, you know, the greed, the, uh, the, the, the sexual stuff, and they attach to different, yeah, and then they basically try and trigger people around them so that they can get those reactions and get fed. And see other dimensions are getting fed. Everything's alive and seeking survival. That's part of this universe. Every single thing in this universe is alive. Now, when you clear something, I'm going to show you something else. Let's take a beautiful green, bowling green lawn, and let's go and let's, let's cut a two-foot square out of it and leave it. If I come back in a couple of weeks, that'll be a jungle of all different life forms. If you clear something and leave a void behind, something else will always fill the void because everything in this universe is seeking survival. And it needs a space, it needs a body, it needs somewhere to go for that survival. Right. 
Okay. So then, let's come back to that whole point that somewhere along this timeline, there's an intelligence that's been created. It's obviously on this planet, which is creating the spiritual war that we've got. And it's actually lashed onto certain individuals and, and given them um, financial clout to be able to manipulate through um, money. I suppose that's the best way to say it. And accumulate wealth to be able to project um, that intelligence you know, onto the masses. Would that be a correct assimilation? <coughs> Excuse me. As I said before, you go back to the Knights Templar, the Knights of Mortar, Order of the Red Cross, the Field Society, Jason Dine, Round Hill Nine, the Milligan Gun Crossbone, Fabio Lodge, Ivory Lodge, Green Lodge. You look at all the secret societies from the beginning of time. Man has been offered position, power, and money. So his greed for position, power, and money has entered this game of another. And he got his position, power, and money. What he doesn't realise is he sold his soul. Mm. He's now in their game. Yeah. He's in their game. And what happens is is they are now ruling through his body. They're demanding now because he's in the game. They're demanding, you know, they come through and, and they're manipulating that body into where we are today. What we hit in our world today is an interdimensional war that's taking place. Mm. Are you going to send the beings that are running the human bodies at that highest level? I believe a lot of those at very high levels, I believe a lot of them are freaking out because I believe when they get in this and they start working their way up, then these things will manifest. In other words, they'll metamorph in the room through the people at the top and the people when they see these metamorphosis taking place, these beings in the room, they will be freaking out because these beings, when they go in, remember, they make the sign. May my throat be cut, my tongue ripped out if I divulge any information. Any information. Second degree, may my heart ripped out, thrown on my left shoulder if I divulge any information. In the third degree, my, my bowels being bailed thrown the fires of hell if I divulge this information. They went into the game and they made that agreement which is valid through time and space for eternity. Or until we unfold time and space back in time to where they made the agreement, we change it back in time and we break the agreement and take out the beans that are in there, right. which we can do. Right. I mean, these people want to be clear. They can be cleared, all right. But I believe so, a lot of them are freaking out because of what they see in shape-shifting. Oh, for sure. So what you're really saying is you don't go and bloody shoot the actual human currently because that that means that the soul that's possessing them, if we want to call it such, that intervention. It's another force. It's another force. As I said, it, it, it's another, it's like that photo I showed you. That little fella, by the time yeah. that kid's a teenager, he'll be 10, 8 to 10 foot tall, the wings of demonic features, manipulating the child. And the child says, wasn't me, mummy, something made me do it. It's these yeah, beings. Yeah, right. Go in the prison system, hear it all the time. So it's not really shooting or killing the actual human. It's the actual no. uh, the metaphysical aspect is to take out that other um, intelligence that's working the human. That's form. right. Yeah, okay. And and look, when people when people go on drugs, yeah, and people do rituals, people have initiations. They haven't wormholes other than let these beans in. And we have people, as I said, our shopping more effort. We have that many people walking off the streets with voices in the head, and might be suicidal. Ah, come on, in the room, we go in, then. We look at the dimension where it came in, what you did. We change the dimension, clear the dimension. We take these forces out. And they walk out in, They walk out with sanity once more. They come in depressed and go out glowing. And that's normal. That is normal. We do it all the time. So what would that session, um, would that be one session or two sessions or three sessions or just one session? Do the job? When, when we've got, let's take an onion. Yeah. If I peel the onion and I look at all the layers of the onion, and sometimes the core down in the centre, usually we can make changes to one session with most people. But when we clear those issues, what can save is another level of the onion, totally separate, can be surfacing. And sometimes you need, sometimes we need to clear the core of a few dimensions. So as we clear these dimensions, they stay cleared and we don't have other dimensions coming from the core upwards. Most of the time we find one session, we get fabulous results. When it comes to the prison system, I like to do three or four sessions on yeah. the prison so I clear many layers, many layers, because you have multiple dimensions within you and, and you can only do so many at a time. And we really like to see, let's clear all the rubbish, let's clear as much of the layers as we can so you're really back in control of you again. So just come back to that. So if you're in the prison service, I mean, obviously, well, the prison system would be part of it. Um, and if you're up there at, um, what would you say? Karatha? No, we. Well, you've got in West Australia, Karatha. Yeah, but Karatha. Yeah, we've, we've got the, the Parky. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, and so what you're saying is that if you went into one of those 
the facilities, yep. if you were to just heal one person, you'd have to put them in a, in a situation there that they're going back into that same environment where all the other um, prisoners have this some um, a similar intelligence working with them as well. How do you protect them from falling back into... Well, what we usually what we usually do is we go into a prison system and it's, it's a lot of rigmarole, believe me. You know, you've got to have the prisoner has to request it. Then he's going back to the community. Then the community has to okay it. Then the policy office has to contact the the health services. The health services have to okay it. Then um, they call us in. Then we're going through the security. We go in one of the rooms. We work on the person. Now, I've worked with people in there that are mentally insane, voice in the head, trying to kill themselves. And when we finish, first thing they say is, wow, I feel different. I don't have to bash my head against the wall anymore. You know? Um, they're stuck in a moment of time, and we change the trauma. They themselves, and we take the beans in there, they themselves are no longer being manipulated, but they can step back at point zero and they can observe the game without going to the game. I had one incident, of course, where new guards came in, and of course, you know, they see the guy out of, and he'd been, he'd been locked up in mental health. He'd been locked up in a padded cell for 52 days. That was against human rights. Anyway, they see him out, and... They decided to push his button, so he lashed out at him, and they locked him up again. It was actually 48 days, then locked him again up to 52, till we intervened and, you know, yeah. But you, you got to you got to look at what's going on out there, and and you know, what's what's in there that wants a person to terminate themselves. Yeah. You look at other things from other dimensions that really want the body of the future, because this is known as the harvest. That's a harvesting of souls. If they can get people to commit suicide or go into the game where they're killed, they entered the game through the free will choice. And what they're saying is, I don't want my body. I don't want my vehicle. So all these beings waiting for the next cycle to come into the vehicles because there's only so many vehicles on this earth, bodies I'm talking about. Yeah. But there are millions of beings out there in other dimensions. Yeah. You know, the thing is, you've got to get your head around the multiple dimensions that are out there and us as a human, who we, what are we really? And believe me, when you see things totally metamorph on the table in front of you, you know humans aren't just humans. Whatever's in you can come forward and shapeshift in front of you. And that happens Doesn't quite it. often. Oh, yeah, I've had things sitting up, hissing, spitting at me and threatening us. And, you know, I've had some, I've had some wonderful, weird metaf metamorphosis take place at times with people that, you know, just, wow, it sort of blew my mind with some of the things I've seen. Um, but nothing surprises me. Do you um, in some of that, some of those cases are you doing it individually, or you've got a few of your other um, acquaintances no, around there to create a, an energy field? No, nearly all of our students, you know, they work on the clients individually. Okay, um, it's right. no It's now to apply the laws. You apply the law, you control the game. There's no how to control the game. That's the difference. Um, and that's why look, mental health wanted to stick up into into mental health and work on people up there. I said no. You bring them to us. You bring them to our game. We control the game. It's yeah. a different story. You got to understand who controls the game. You know, you go to someone else's house, you enter their game. What's in the house? Whose game has just entered? It's so subtle but powerful in understanding these laws. Yeah. See, I see a lot of practitioners out there today go into people's houses and working on them. And I'll tell you, the amount of times I've practiced come to me that have been doing that as a living and the amount of stuff they've picked up from other people's houses because they ended the game of these beans. Yeah. They were there first. Mm. So how do you um, – obviously the judicial system, you see a lot of um, Aborigines going in before the judicial system. How do you um, – I mean, the judicial system has its own um, intelligence there that sometimes you have to think, well, that doesn't sound right. There's no – there's no sovereignty happening in that particular jurisdiction, is there? What, what we used to do with a lot of the communities is we would have uh, the um, Aboriginal officer in charge of um, the youth groups and the youth groups, they would link to the Justice Department and they would bring in all the youth in those communities that were troubled youth for us to work on. They'd organise, so we'd come and we'd just go and work on them and get make big changes. Um, today... You know, we have the police liaison officer and talk about the justice system and wanting to divert a lot of the kids to us 
instead of putting them back on the streets or locking them up. Because we know they're stuck in time and he's seen what we're doing. They've seen what we're doing and they know we can make changes. And it's something that is outside of our mainstream understanding system today. So for them to get their head around some of these things, but even mental health at present, they're saying, we can't explain what you're doing, but it's working. They don't, they can't explain because they don't know what the, they they don't know how to do it anymore. Mm. You know, and it's Aboriginal yeah, people, people. Aboriginal mental health. You see, um, okay. but we know what we're doing. I said, we've been I've been fifty years doing this, and you know, it's another day at the office. That's all. So, um, for Australians, would you be? Are you bulk bill on a Medicare, or how does that work? How do you? I oh, no, pay? no. The, the the government doesn't pay for anything outside of. You know, it's mainstream system control. I mean, I can tell you some stories that blow your mind about, you know, Queensland Health that, that took place in the past. You know, we had a young girl, example. We had a young girl hang herself. Went to Queensland Health, and this was up at Cooktown, put her in the office in Queensland Health because uh, her, her mother worked there. I went and took out this massive entity he was trying to take her out. Fifteen minutes later, we had all the staff called in the office. They were told if they're caught talking to us, if they're talking, associating with us, They'll be fired. You can understand these health services is a multi-million dollar industry. They don't want to come with somebody coming in and, and, and making changes and getting results. That's not how it works. Right. So, so, so I've funded this, I've funded all this myself over right. 50 odd years. So if someone come and saw you and made an appointment, I mean, uh, is it straight off the street or you just make an appointment and you said it would be if we get people off the street to come and suicide, then we just work on for nothing. Yeah. Right. Um, but normally, you know, we charge and I charge 200 a session, takes an hour and we get results. Look, I've had one of my students, she was under mental health for seven years. One session, we got to what they couldn't do in seven years. She's now one of my students. Okay. And, and that's not uncommon, not uncommon. Yeah. 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 Well, right, the, so the, 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 the key to all of this is that we are working what Aboriginal culture has always known, and that is the power of the spirit of the individual and how to work with the spirit to make changes of the dimensions of reality because it knows how, where, when, and why. They're back there reliving. It's not my stuff. I don't take it on. Their stuff. We're a system there, look at their own stuff as the spirit brings it up. Then we get their spirit to unfold time and space on dimension, clear dimension, and... It makes changes to them. They make changes to them. It's not my stuff. Do you understand? It's you healing you. Gotcha. And just to understand a little bit better, only a creator can change their creation and everything you've ever created in your universe is your creation. So only you can change your creation. I only assist. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve, for um, that's been pretty much dynamite. And, um, you know, it's just been wonderful to know that, that, you know, there are people out there like you who are doing that work and empowering people and freeing them and teaching people all over the world how to do this, uh, following the universal law, how to sort of free the spirits from, from their trapped dimensions of time. So thank you very much for joining us and um, you know, telling us all sort of how we can get, you know, how we can access that. And um, good luck, you know, with all the future. Thank you. Thank you. Doing. Steve, it's fantastic, mate. Really uh, incredible share. Um, and it's great to have insight and I'm, I'm very helpful. Oh, well, I'm very pleased that we provided a platform here uh, through our our viewers and our listeners. I think it's um, opened a few people to looking at um, another modality. In fact, an old ancient modality that's um, older than traditional Western medicine. I think um, thanks for coming on and sharing it. No, you're, you're welcome. I really hope this enlightens a lot more people to the world we really live in and the multidimensional world we really live in and who we really are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.